Look at what I found this morning. Tadpoles, pollywogs, baby frogs. A really important part of your landscape. Let's talk about frogs. Hi, I'm Elise. I'm glad that you stopped by the garden. I've been raising tadpoles now for several years. It's something I really look forward to. Here in Zone 9B, usually we get the tadpoles middle to late summer. I just sit some buckets out around the garden, kind of out of the way, and then I check them every couple of days. Now, if some little frog comes and lays their eggs, it's very easy to tell. The top of the water will look like there's a gel on it. And in that gel will be loads of little bitty black dots. If it's a frog, that gel is going to be in a circular pattern. If it's a frog, it's going to be strips. And in a couple of days, after you see the eggs, they'll grow a little bit and then they'll start hatching out. It is easy to tell the difference in frog larvae and mosquito larvae, so don't worry about it. And if you are concerned about having a bucket of water sitting around too long, just ever so often change your water out. Now, you can also find them in other places. You can find them in bird baths. You can find them in ditches beside the road. Anywhere that water accumulates long enough for the eggs to hatch out. But these are an extremely, extremely important part of a healthy garden. Did you ever see the old X-Files episode where the herpetologist was so concerned because the frogs were disappearing? And they were talking about how important the frogs are to the planet. Well, you know, if they said that on the X-Files, it must be true. Anyway, so what I have done is I've started dipping these out. I use a very fine stretch uh, mesh strainer and I just dip them out. And I have a terrarium that I put them in. If you don't have a terrarium, use a big glass bowl, anything you want to use. Now it's going to take me a little while to dip all these out. I do not waste this water. The water from where you change your water in your terrarium or the water where they've laid their eggs and hatched out, it's just absolutely full of nutrients. It makes really good fertilizer for your plants. Every time I change the water in my terrarium, I save the water and I use it for fertilizer. And the plants love it. So I'm going to move the camera around now so we can see the terrarium. All right, this is, I don't know, a 10 gallon terrarium. Now, I've already put some of the tadpoles in. You can see them a little better now. Really neat. 7,300 something like that varieties of tadpoles. Over 200 of them are poisonous. Now these aren't poisonous. I don't know exactly the variety, but according from everything I've read, we don't have poisonous frogs or toads in our area. And toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. <laughs> it's one of those. <laughs> okay, and frogs can be the size of a housefly up to the size of a bowling ball or bigger. Very, very important to the ecology of the planet, of the ecology of your garden. A couple of reasons. Frogs are prey. There are numerous, numerous, numerous animals that eat frogs. Now when frogs grow up, they become predator and then they just reverse and they eat all the little creatures that used to eat them when they were little. So it's this balance of prey-predator. An adult frog will eat anything that it can fit into its mouth. Anything. Rats. Anything. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but there is a lizard on the other side of the terrarium trying his best to get a tadpole. He's jumping up and hitting the glass. I hope the camera is picking it up. Yes, lizards eat tadpoles, birds eat tadpoles, fish eat tadpoles, other larvae eat tadpoles. That is so neat. Silly lizard. All right. Thousands of varieties, all different sizes, all different colors, different shapes, 
different habitats, different foods that they like. They make different sounds. Frogs live everywhere except Antarctica, an extremely important part of the planet. This whole prey predator thing. Now, young frogs like this, or tadpoles, polywogs, whatever you want to call them, they like to eat algae and dead and decaying material. And see all these tadpoles down here attaching, sucking on this old leaf. I have a can of plant here and I put some dead foliage in here. And that's what they eat when they're young. They also will eat lettuce. I quite often put the old wilted kind of yucky lettuce that you don't want anymore. That's what I put in here to feed them with. And they love it. Not the purple variety, but they do like that really soft. Remember, they don't have teeth. They are going to suck the nutrients out. Really neat. I did put in some mushy peas one time, the green peas. They did not like them. I ended up having to go in and scoop all the peas out. Wouldn't even touch them. But I figured they're soft and they're mushy. They taste pretty good to us. But nope, they wouldn't eat them. All right. Don't worry about a glut of frogs. There's so much natural die-off. You don't have to worry about it. I think last year I ended up with four adult frogs out of thousands of tadpoles for adult frogs. Lots of natural die-off and in the wild it would be even more because these would hatch in bodies of water, lakes, rivers, things like that and all the other little creatures would eat them. It takes about 14 weeks from egg to frog and during that time they do change their food preferences. When they're young like this They'll eat algae, they'll eat rotten, decaying material. About in the middle of the cycle, they turn into omnivores. They're going to start eating meat, other little insects, other little amphibians, and they will still eat some plant life. Later on, close to the stage of turning completely into a frog, especially when they get their back legs, there are carnivores. Some of them will still eat a few plants, but they are primary carnivores. Everywhere but Antarctica. Everywhere. They aren't even sure, they, the herpetologists who study this, they aren't even sure how many varieties of frogs. They're still finding varieties of frogs. Neat. Extremely important part. You want frogs in your garden. Not only because they are, they do grow up to be a predator and they eat some things you might not want, like rats. Um, I've even read they'll eat a snake. They eat birds. Uh, they eat turtles. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? Yeah, but anything that they can fit in their mouth, they will eat. Okay, setting up your tank. What I did was I put this water in here for several days and just let it sit. As soon as I saw that I actually had some egg action in this five gallon bucket. And I let it sit for a couple of days to dissipate any chemicals in the water. I put a can of plant in and that's the roots you see over here. The can of plant does pretty good in water but you can use just about any plant in there. And as you see it gives them a hiding place. They'll also eat the roots of that. They'll eat the leaves. But when they want to run away from the little larger tadpoles, they have a place to hide. And as you can see down here, they really like that dead decaying leaf. And over here, they're just going to town. Really neat. So, easy to feed, easy to take care of. I do change the water periodically. I wait though until it gets really yucky and then I save that water and use it for fertilizer. Since they kind of like algae and dirty water a little bit, I do leave it for a while. It is going to have some odor. No more than a fish tank that if you didn't clean it out regularly. Now you can put soil in here. You can put some maybe some white um, 
play sand in here. Put more plants in here. You can set this up as a whole beautiful little terrarium. Put aquatic plants in. Whatever you want to do. Fantastic project for your kids, your grandkids, school kids. If, you need a, if you're a teacher and you need a school project, this is great. Okay, 14 weeks from the egg to the, frog, uh, to the adult frog. Normally, toads take a little longer. Again, you can tell the difference if it's a toad because toads have strips of gel with their eggs, not round circles. Toads are a little different anyway. Toads are usually duller, thicker skinned, not as colorful. They do not jump, or they don't leap, let's say. They can jump a little bit, but they don't leap like a frog. Their back legs are short. They don't live in water. They're terrestrial. Of course, there's always exceptions. But normally toads do not live in water once they get to the adult stage. They make different sounds. They like different habitats. They mate a little different. So toads are really easy to tell from frogs. Frogs are usually a little slim line. They have long back legs that enable them to leap. Usually a little strimmer mouth area. They can be colored. They look like they're wet all the time. They need moisture. Again, they like different foods. They make different sounds, different sizes, the whole nine yards. Fantastic project and they are so much fun to watch. So much fun to watch. So, these will grow fast. They'll get fat and they will grow really, really fast. And again, don't worry about a glut. You'll never get a glut. Even when you're raising them yourself in the terrarium or your glass bowl or whatever you're using. Now, a couple of hints. I raise mine outside. If you raise yours inside, you don't have this issue. But if I raise mine outside, if you're putting them in a terrarium, don't fill your water line all the way up to the top. This tank is two-thirds, just a little over a half filled up. The reason being is lizards come up here and try to get in to get them. Birds will come and try to get them. And other little creatures will try to get in. So I keep the water level down a half, just a little above a half. So another little creature can't come in and grab them from the top. The frogs I had last year went through one of our hurricanes and a tropical storm. I just left them right here. This is the same spot I always raise them at. I just wrap the top. I put plastic over the top so that all the rainfall wouldn't fill the tank over and it would overflow. And they did fine. They went through the hurricane fine. I had a little talk with them. They were a little stressed, but they were okay. I gave them a little extra sweet lettuce. Okay. Easy to grow, fantastic project. I'm sure I forgot stuff. There's just so much to talk about frogs. Wonderful, wonderful project. We'll come back, we'll visit these often and see how they're growing, how they're doing. So I'm going to finish dipping the frogs out I will use that water that was in the five gallon bucket to fertilize, or to fertilize with. Plants love it. And these will just sit here. They'll be fine. I have some lettuce set aside in the house. Like I said, I knew a couple of days ago that the eggs had been laid. I have some lettuce set aside. I'll bring out and give them a little fresh lettuce. I do not overfill my tank with food that I give them like lettuce and stuff like that. I just keep an eye on it and when they have eaten most of it up then I put more in. That's just me. You might be able to just go ahead and put everything in you want to at one time and let it eat it up because they do like dead and decaying material. But they seem to be happy in there. They're getting little places that some of them are hiding. Really neat, really cool. We'll come back and visit I hope this is something that you can add to your landscape. And remember, 
extremely critical part of your landscape. They are indicator of how healthy your landscape is. Till we come back and visit these again, have a fantastic day. <laughs>